Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up one of these ESP32 microcontrollers for use with either Arduino IDE or MicroPython on your next electronics project. These ESP32 microcontrollers are really powerful because they come with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which isn't standard on most Arduino products. But I thought it would be great uh, to set one up with Arduino IDE capability and one with MicroPython, because I've been itching to try that out. So then on the projects that I have coming up, I'm gonna be able to test out which one works a little bit better for me and which is more um, comfortable to program in. Stick around, I'm gonna show you how to set up the ESP32 for both Arduino IDE and for MicroPython. We're going to be doing this project using Microsoft Windows. So the first thing you need to do is head over to Silicon Labs, which is silabs.com, and I'll leave a link in the description and download the USB to serial adapter so that it will recognize and assign a COM port to the ESP32 chip. Simply scroll down till you find your version of Windows and save the one that you need and then run that application. It should only be a few short steps and then when you plug your ESP32 in, it will recognize it. Next, we're gonna go over to the arduino.cc website and we're gonna download the Arduino IDE. That is the interface that's used to program an Arduino and it will work great with a little bit of extra configuration for our ESP32 as well. Once the Arduino IDE is downloaded and run, you can open it up and we're gonna to head to File and Preferences and we're gonna go right to this section called Additional Board Manager and click the little folder icon beside it. And then as we look here, there's a link for click for a list of unofficial boards. Click that and it will bring you to a web page which has the links for all the different boards. If you scroll down and find Expressive, ESP32, Expressive is the company that makes the chip, and then copy that link. You're going to now paste it into that field that says additional board manager. Once you save that, we'll have the board options for the ESP32. Next, we'll go to the tools menu, choose board, and scroll down and find the board that you're using. In my case, it's the Do It ESP32 dev kit. And then the last thing is to choose the port. In this case, mine got assigned to COM4. If you don't see a port here, you might not have installed the driver properly or you might not have plugged in your ESP32 yet. Next thing I'm going to do is just simply load the example blink sketch. And this is going to blink an LED on and off every one second. And so you just go to examples, load that sketch, and then you start compiling it. Once I pressed the button to upload it to the ESP32, it took almost 30 seconds for it to actually compile and upload it to the chip before it started working. But once that was process was done, you can see indeed that blue LED starts blinking on and off every one second. That's how you set up Arduino IDE. To set up MicroPython, we still need to install that USB to serial driver, but because I've already done that, you don't need to here, and then go to micropython.org and download the latest driver for your ESP32. So you're gonna scroll down the list of downloads until you get to the firmware for ESP32 boards. I use the most recent generic driver and I just save that bin file somewhere on my computer where it's easy to find. The next easiest step I found is to download UPyCraft IDE for Windows. I have a link for it in the description and that will allow you to uh, use UPyCraft IDE. That's gonna be much easier to use than the command line prompts for flashing the firmware and for programming it uh, for your first steps. I did try a bunch of different command line software and I just found it frustrating and uh, you know there was gaps in, in the information of how you're supposed to do it. You have to copy and paste commands, edit them, and all of those things where using this uh, graphical user interface of UPyCraft IDE is just so much easier. Once you've downloaded it and run it, you get this window and you can start by clicking the connect button, which looks like a couple of links in a chain and you might get an error that says it can't find it. But if you try again, clicking that button, it should prompt you with a little box and that little box is asking you to flash the firmware. You just need to choose under board ESP32, the burn address, you're gonna choose 1000 and you're gonna to choose to erase the flash and click the users button. When you click the users, button you'll get a prompt to point to the software that you downloaded from micropython.org you simply choose that software 
and then click OK. The flash and burn process takes about 30 seconds and it just runs through erasing the what's currently on the ESP32 microcontroller and then burning on a new set of firmware that will work with MicroPython. One of the big differences with MicroPython compared to Arduino, there are Python files that get installed to the memory that you can use and program like any other Python file. So if you've programmed in Python before, it's a very easy language to use. Once you're done, you'll again click the connect icon and choose the device in the top left corner and you can choose the boot.py file and you can start writing code immediately. Now, I'm pretty new to uh, this, so I'm making some mistakes as I go that I need to correct, but basically you're gonna import the machine library which controls the actual microcontroller pins and uh, functions. And then in this case, I'm gonna import the time library as well so that I can create some delays. And then I'm simply gonna de declare the pin variable as machine pin two and declare it as an output. Unlike Arduino, there isn't a, a setup and a loop function. So you have to create your own loop function if you want something to repeat itself. And in order to do that, you create a while true, which is always going to be true. And so while it is true, it's gonna just keep looping through the code that you put in the while true function. It's a simple code that turns the pin on, waits a second, turns the pin off, waits a second, and keeps repeating over and over again. Once you click the play button, which downloads and runs the software, it almost instantly takes effect and starts blinking on and off. This was a major thing that I noticed right away, so much faster than the Arduino IDE, which took about 30 seconds to compile and download. That's it. Now MicroPython is running on the ESP32. So as you can see, both Arduino and MicroPython platforms require a little extra configuration for the ESP32. But once you have them uh, properly configured, it's pretty easy to upload code and get the Blink sketch working just like you would on any other Arduino or microcontroller project. Now obviously this is a pretty simple example, but I just wanted to show you how you would actually set them up and have them ready to go for whatever project you can think of. I hope that gives you some inspiration to try one of these in your next electronics project. And let me know in the comments what you decide to try and how it turned out. I've got a lot of electronics projects in mind, and so I'm anxious to get started with these ESP32 microcontrollers and see how they perform. If you found this video useful, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more projects, and until next time in all your DIY projects, don't be afraid to be balder.